Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Kubuntu 20.04 which is codenamed Focal Fusa. This is a long-term support release that will be supported for the next five years. The planets have really aligned for this Kubuntu release in that we have a long-term support release of the KDE Plasma desktop that is currently at 5.18.4. And we also have a long-term support release of the Linux kernel which is at 5.4. The 5.4 kernel gives us new features such as Lockdown, which is designed to make it more difficult for root exploits to happen. And we have the backported WireGuard VPN, which has been added to this kernel. The theming of Snap-based applications looks a lot better now in Kubuntu. You wouldn't really know it here with LibreOffice, but yet yeah, you're looking at a Snap application as well as Chromium. Yep, yeah, these are both Snaps. They start up quickly for me. The theming looks seamless. That's exactly the behavior I would expect out of a snap. I want it to be a seamless experience. And now at last, we're getting it for some of the applications in Kubuntu 20.04. KDE 4 packages have now been removed from Kubuntu. And thanks to reduced 32-bit support, you will no longer find a 32-bit ISO release. However, you can still get some 32-bit applications like Steam. There's a core selection of 32-bit applications which are still being supported by Canonical. You can add the latte doc to Kubuntu. Oh, there's also a new type of menu available under the show alternatives, the simple menu. I'll show you that in a moment. And I know I'm looking at my full install of a system, a system which I've been using for a couple of weeks now. And I have to say it's been running really well, except for a really weird glitch on there when it kept telling me to restart over and over again. But yeah, other than that, Kubuntu 2004 has been running really well. Anyway, back to the changes, we have the Eliza music player has replaced Cantata. The theming and integration with Eliza is a lot more seamless, so actually it looks really good. And yeah, it's built as a cute application. It's been built to look seamless in the Plasma desktop, but it's not just a cute application that looks seamless. You know, things like Inkscape, yep, that looks good. Fits in nicely there. LibreOffice, as we've seen, looks good as well. That fits in perfectly. Firefox, yep all themes very nicely. Let's take a look at what Kubuntu would look like as a more basic install. So this is the new simple menu. It's just a bit of a different layout. Still seems nice and responsive. It's another alternative for an application launcher and it's built in. And I much prefer these widgets to be built into Kubuntu because at least you know they're gonna be supported for the long term. Another widget that's been added into the Plasma desktop now is the night light controls. I have to say this is a feature I really like using. Yeah, it's just as simple as that to turn it on and you'll get a little indicator when the night light is on. In fact, let's try and force it on. So yeah, there you are, you see it in the system tray. Going across into the settings menu under themes, you can see we have a choice of breeze light or dark. I use the dark normally. And the Kubuntu theme is a bit of a mixture between the two. So actually that's very similar to how Ubuntu have done their desktop. They've got the light and dark themes and then the mixture of the two as the default. For downloading new themes, you now have a new style here. This is a grid style. And quite a lot of the settings menus have been changed to this style. The GTK color theming is meant to follow the plasma theming, but I found this effect not to work properly. I mean, you still get to choose between whether you want like the breeze, light and dark, but I've never found it follow exactly the same. And I've used KD Neon and Kubuntu for this, so either I'm missing something on the themings or it doesn't work as well as it's advertised. There is one subtle difference between Kubuntu and many of the other Linux distributions which are using the Plasma desktop. And that involves the feature called KUserFeedback. user feedback. It is a tool that is now built into Plasma 5.18 desktop that allows you to send feedback of how you're using the system to KDE developers. It is entirely optional to use and you have to turn it on. But that feature does not exist in Kubuntu. What we have instead is under Applications and Diagnostics that we can send error reports to Canonical. And the privacy policy is completely different with Kubuntu compared to the likes of KDE Neon. This is the privacy policy for Canonical, KDE Neon has the privacy policy for KDE. While the feature comes enabled out of the box, you do have every opportunity to disable it. If I open up a text application and I press the super key and full stop, or period, whatever you want to call it, we get the emoji picker. I do believe that's the same shortcut as Windows 10. Huh, that's odd, there's one missing. 
you know, you just select it and then that copies it to the clipboard and then you can paste it in to the application you're using. Looking at the selection of pre-installed applications, so under games, you do have a few games pre-installed. Graphics, you've got Gwenview, but even that's pretty standard for a minimal KDE install. Internet, you've got a Firefox a web browser. The KDE PIM suite, which consists of contacts and Kmail, has been removed and that's been replaced with Thunderbird. Multimedia, as I mentioned, we have Eliza for the audio player and we have VLC for a media player. Under Office, you have the full suite of LibreOffice, and that is the Deb-based version. Setting system and utilities, just you know, fairly basic there, nothing really notable or worthy of mentioning. One last thing I will mention under the stock install is the selection of snaps which are pre-installed, and there is zero. There are no snaps pre-installed out of the box on Kubuntu. And on the subject of snaps with the software installer Discover, the Deb-based packages are preferred above the snap-based packages. So the snaps always listed in second place. That is a snap application there. And it's been a similar story as far as I've found. Yeah, VLC, dead based one there. Second place is the snap. Of course, an exception is where only the snap based version of an application exists in the repositories, then yeah, that is all that will be listed. And one more feature I'll mention is you have the ability to mute an application with this little speaker icon that appears over the relevant application, which is playing audio. The Wayland session, which is an alternative to Xorg, is available but is not supported and therefore not pre-installed. And that is it. And uh, I have to say that this is probably about the most stable long-term support release of Kubuntu that you'll probably get. We have the long-term support release of the Plasma desktop. We have the long-term support release kernel. Things are looking really good in terms of stability for this release. And what's the other option if you want long-term support and stability? Debian? Well. I've never really found KDE that good under Debian. I suppose you've got the likes of KDE Neon. Yep, that's always another option, and that's what I've been using for the past couple of years, and that's worked fine with the rolling release desktop. But with Kubuntu, I'm happy with it so far. Thanks for watching, and see you all later.